Thank you so much. Thank you, Ridima, for inviting me today. Um, I've attended a couple of these um, learning series and it has been very nice, uh, very productive, to talking about productivity. So yes, I feel like there's a um, high standard by some of the coaches that I have had the luck uh, to listen to before. Um, and welcome to everybody. Thanks for giving up. Some of you are in India and it's 5 p.m. So thank you for giving up your time on a Thursday afternoon where maybe uh, you are already thinking about the weekend and, and so on. So I'm going to start sharing my presentation. Okay. So today we're talking a little bit about uh, productivity and um, purpose. Okay. Success, productivity, purpose, etc. So I want to start, oh, why, why can't I? Okay, so we're going to be looking at sort of three things. I'm going to talk a little bit about my own story, which is, no surprise, related to um, productivity, purpose, <laughs> etc. Um, and then we're going to, I'm just going to introduce a couple of times like different concepts. So first of all, we're going to talk about success and then we're going to talk about purpose. And in both occasions, the structure is I'm just introducing a few things, a few ideas. And then given that we have a lot of coaches, a lot of people who are um, reflective here and understand the power of reflection, I'm going to invite you also to a little bit of a reflective time. You can share as much as you want. You don't need to share if you don't want. You can keep the questions for later on if nothing is coming to mind right now. Um, you can use your chat. You can use um, the open uh, microphone. And we'll try to manage time so we all get uh, sort of out of here in good time to, to, to go and do weekend things, as, as I'm saying. Okay? So I hope that this plan sounds good. So with this in mind, I just want to talk a little bit about myself, okay? So uh, myself and how my story relates to this uh, theme of purpose today. So I have actually put myself in numbers uh, and I've kind of put from the highest to the lowest number, let's say. So I have uh, actually completed over 500 hours of coaching, which in ICF language would be like second level, let's say. I have a total of 25 years of experience um, overall, including everything. I have been married 19 years, so this is my personal side. I have two boys. Um, I have coached clients from 15 different nationalities, um, and that is very fascinating for me. It's always very interesting. Uh, I, I am a little bit of a cultural and leadership and human behavior observer. So interacting with different nationalities is always very interesting uh, to me. Um, before being a coach full time, I have actually been in HR for 14 years, always in London, always in investment banking. So, um, and I also have a deep um, relationship to performance, actually. I have, and I have worked in high performance environments I'm sure that I'll talk a little bit more throughout today about this. And these high performance environments are very interesting to observe human nature <laughs> and human behavior. So again, we'll, we, I'm sure that we'll have a chance to discuss this at some point. Okay, so after my HR life, I have been a coach and consultant for 10 years. And I think that this is where my relationship with Purpose starts. Um, so around 10 years ago, I have been in the corporate world. Um, I have reached what would be like a kind of understood as a senior position in human resources. I was really kind of, I could see now uh, the leaders on top of, of me, of the organization. And I uh, starting to have some questions, which I think that is something that is very, well, at least it has been very common with a lot of my clients as well. And of course, some of these questions start to be a little bit about what am I doing? Is it connected um, to my purpose? What is my purpose? You know, after all, 
Um, do I want to be in the office until very late every day <laughs> and not see my children, you know, etc., etc. So some things start to kind of uh, come up. And interestingly, um, events in my life then just supported me towards this new avenue of um, going into a more purposeful work. And I have to say the last 10 years have been a fantastic journey, a mix of exploring, um, discovering, um, and also helping others do the same as well. Um, and yes, like being a coach completely fulfills me. Um, is the thing that I will do for the rest of my life? I don't know. Like, <laughs> we, we, we don't know. I think that, that life keeps on evolving. And I think that there are different expressions, but this is what I'm doing right now. And, and I love it, basically. So I have lived in five countries and I lived eight years in Africa. And this, again, has been very formative for my purpose side of things. Um, I am somebody who... Uh, I believe I believe in men, I but I definitely believe a lot in women. Okay, and I think that going to Africa, if, if I had just, I always say, if I had just looked at my experience from a European perspective and from a Spanish perspective, which is where I am originally from, I would have thought that maybe um, you know the work for women to for advancing women was kind of done, but living five uh, for for eight years in Nairobi, in Kenya, I've come to think, uh, wow, no, we still, <laughs> we still have to do a lot more work. <laughs> so in Kenya, I actually coached a lot of women, um, and I think it was, it was amazing um, to help a lot of those women as well. Okay, I speak four languages, and if we summarize my areas of coaching, I think that. Um, they always gravitate around career, executive, and leadership. And, and that's what I have um, actually been focusing on. I'm originally from Spain, and currently I uh, spend most of my time in UK, but I do sp spend time still in Kenya and in Spain. So there you go, very glamorous life, <laughs> dividing across continents, uh, basically. Okay. So I'm not sure I can see the chat, so Redima or the admin, maybe you can help me. But the idea here was, I want you guys to get now into the thinking of success. So can you write for us in the chat? I may be able to see it, but I'm doing the presentation. Um, can you share in one word, what does success mean to you? Could be to you? Or could be like, what do you think that we talk about when we mean success? What do we think? What do you, sorry, what do you think we mean when we talk about success? Okay. So, uh, Christina has written happiness. Uh, and I think for me, uh, Angie, success is being content. Wherein there is a uh, thoughts to achieve more, but you are content in your heart and in your mind. So that is what success uh, means to me. Uh, and we also have Amit who has joined us. Hi, Amit. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Ritima. Yeah. So, uh, Amit, uh, jumping on here we are. So, it would be great if we could, you know, make it interactive and we, we could share, each one of us could share uh, what does success mean to us. So, Amit, why not we start with you? I, I just wrote on chat box because I thought Angie said I should write it on a chat box. So. Um, okay, so success for me is the positive impact that I am creating in my clients' lives through my service. I'm a financial advisor and I'm on a mission to make sure that clients are having a good balance of wealth and happiness, not just wealth. Because only when you're happy with your money, you will live a more fulfilling and joyful life. And if money can be made a very impactful resource through the service that I render, then obviously clients will learn to manage the money in a healthy manner, extract more juice out of their lives by fulfilling their goals that they've identified for which they would need money working for them in a very strong manner. That's my two cents. Hi, it's Kelly. I, 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 
you know, a little here as well. Um, I feel like success is, is, is experiencing fulfillment and fulfillment with a balance um, of, of, of feeling like each day you can um, feel like you've made a positive impact um, on your life or someone else's life and um, fulfillment in, in that you're always learning and growing um, with a balance of, of, of time to be able to think in this crazy world we live in, right? And, um, and, and to have rigor. So it's, it's sitting back and, and thinking, I really do feel fulfilled in the balance that I have in my life. Okay, thank you so much. Anybody else? Maybe we take somebody else or Redima. Can you tell me what are people putting on the chat? Sure. Gita, Trisakya, what would you like to share your sense or as you would like to write on chat? Ah, it's a little golden bubble. So, yes, Gita. Success is a journey, it's not a destination because you keep on give, you keep on fulfilling your goals or meeting your clients. We at the hour left. And for me, meeting each and every day, every milestone that I have planned, I feel fulfilled, and that's what success is to me. Okay, so thank you so much about that. So basically, uh, really, Ma, if you're not talking, can you? Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so basically, there's a few concepts that are coming up. Um, of course, I wasn't expecting less of you guys. I mean, you you are advanced students <laughs> um, as uh, as coaches, right? Like, so as coaches, we have had potentially the time uh, and the inclination to actually think about some of these things. I love some of the things that are coming out. Um, I heard happiness. I heard content content uh, being content i've heard feeling fulfilled basically i've heard kind of continuously learning i love also the fact that yes is not a destination is a journey basically and it is obviously focusing a little bit more on the this on the journey than the actual destination right or of course it depends on how we we understand the destination so I think if I um, kind of summarize a little bit this, so if we go to more traditional definitions of success, which obviously is not what's coming up here today, of course, but it will be what's coming up with our clients quite strongly. Success is very often seen as an outcome, as Gita was saying, okay? And there's different ways or there's different measurements of success that people are kind of putting there, right? So people will be looking for either status, wealth, title, of course, power could also be here, but it's a bit like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about what is the manifestation? What is that measurement? How do we see success in a traditional way? Okay. In companies, of course, it will be uh, about productivity, metrics, output, etc. It's super clear to me that all of these things are outcomes. Okay, so status is something that you have reached, wealth is something that you have um, at some point in your life, title again, you have gotten there, productivity, output is something, all of these are outcomes, okay? Now, why are uh, people rethinking success? So remember that I said I've worked in um, investment banking and this is a, it, it's a um, high performance environment. So I, I have seen, uh, being in HR and investment banking, we have seen some of these things. Um, I'm going to mention here about physical health or mental health, of course. So if you have worked in anything to do with people in with organizations, you would have seen some of these um, measurements starting to come up. Of course, like everything, we constantly evolve our language and our understanding of things. So. Mm, we didn't know so much about mental health when we were not, we, we didn't have the language perhaps and we were not tracking it, okay? We have known about physical health for a bit longer, I would say. Um, and for me, there's the dimension also of disconnection or separation. Um, 
if you go back to sort of medieval ages, there was a very high um, association of what you did, you did for for your soul somehow, right? Or different religions may still talk about this, of course. Um, karma, etc. cetera. Um, but interestingly, over time, especially in the Western environment, we have been disconnecting, we have kind of been separating. Um, and we have also started to identify more with different things, right? And here I'm going more the societal and economic changes. So. Um, definitely with the emergence of uh, U.S. as a world leader, you know, um, capitalism is the, the kind of the pride of, uh, <laughs> of the thinking, etc. That has been actually ruling our economics, etc. So with time, we have really started to kind of associate with these things that are more about the having, they are more about the showing externally, like this is the measure, money, you know, it's a, is the measurement of success. By the way, we're not saying at any time that any of these things are bad or are evil or that we don't need them. We absolutely need all of these things, okay? But what we are saying is that we have actually kind of put it in different boxes We have and we have started to measure ourselves and measure our success uh, sometimes on maybe just one main measurement of success, right? Um, and we have kind of forgotten a little bit like what are the other legs that balance? I also like this word balance a lot. What are the different dynamics that kind of bring balance to our life, okay? So of course we all know people who have reached the title or have reached the wealth. People say the rich also cry, that's true, <laughs> right? There are people who are CEOs and they're not happy, of course, <laughs> or content. Um, there are people who are extremely productive, but they end up in burnout. Um, so there's, there's a lot in there to unpack. And I think that what is really amazing is that we are getting to understand more and we are constantly evolving and having more language and tracking more. And I also want to mention this lack of fulfillment um, I'm sure as clients, you will have had, oh, sorry, as coaches, you will have had also clients who are showing some of these. They feel disengaged. They start to feel disengaged with their work. Again, because especially in the corporate world, I have had clients who are in NGO world or kind of other type of industries and it's a little bit different, but especially in, in, in industries or areas where we are really bringing it down to measuring people by what they produce. Basically, at some point in time, sometimes some people are having a disengagement with work. It's like, why, why are we? Why I? Why am I working? Right? Like, <laughs> who am I? Like, I'm, I'm nothing else other than a salesperson or 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 a producer, right? And there's a certain disenchantment when 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 we look at life a bit like this. And this is the productivity trap, really. Um, interestingly, living in Kenya, the culture of hassle was also extremely big. <laughs> so no, again, nothing is good or bad as we know, right? As far as we are keeping it in a certain balance. Like it's beautiful if you have a job to have a side hustle. But in Kenya, sometimes I saw that the culture glamorizes the hassle so much that is creating expectations in people and, and it's like, it's too much. I mean, when you already have a job that is busy, you have a family, you have children, you have already so much going on and then to continuously add expectations and more things in the end is a bit like, wow, you know, like boom, 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 boom. And also, um, I like to talk about success. When, when I talk to my clients about success, I also like to talk about failure, okay? Because different cultures um, also have very different relationships with failure, okay? And of course, again, when we are coaches, probably we have already explored this area. We know that failure is information, okay? 
failure is not mm, that you are not able to create something, okay? Failure is simply information. Sometimes it's telling you, okay, this is not the way to go or where to go or the way to do it. Like you can, you can change your goal. You can change the how to achieve your goal. You may need to readapt some things, but it doesn't mean that you are a failure. But as humans, we, are, we tend to really assimilate failure with who we are. <laughs> and, and this creates also a lot of uh, problems, okay? So I think that uh, to summarize this, there's definitely a traditional definition of success, which I think is changing, but quite frankly, it's still there, okay? It's still how people are measuring themselves. It's still creating lots of unhappiness. Um, and then obviously uh, there is a productivity trap in the sense that we still work, we are still employees in, um, in companies, etc. Um, or we are still entrepreneurs, like this can happen to anybody. Uh, and we're still measuring ourselves uh, or, or, or either in a non-holistic way. Um, and then this means that we can end up having either problems with physical health, mental health, etc. And is the whole concept of being busy versus being pur purposeful, okay? Um, doing with a purpose is very different to just doing, basically. Okay, so this was kind of the framing that I wanted to show you. Um, so I wanted to mention this one book. Uh, I've read it this year. I've, I've come across Bruce Feiler before. So, um, and, and I wanted to introduce this book as a way for me to show you that definitely the language is changing. We are expanding our language. We are expanding our understanding. And I think for me, this book is a good example of this. In this book, uh, Filer is actually being very brave, I think, <laughs> because he's American. <laughs> um, but he's really, he's really getting this out from uh, interviews uh, that he has done with lots of Americans and he is like really putting the big question there mm, should we redefine the American dream um, I think he's getting to a point where he's saying well we don't need to get rid of it but we we just need to understand it a little bit differently basically right um, and he's talking about freeing yourself, uh, which as, again, we know in coaching is very useful to free yourself from a lot of the programming or a lot of the um, expectations that have come from previous generations, etc., etc. Or that, that kind of, oh, you can only be a doctor or an accountant or a lawyer, you know, <laughs> um, etc. So freeing ourselves from outdated scripts and identifying what meaning means to us. And actually every single job, every single activity in this world can be meaningful, can be, um, can be done with lots of integrity and lots of dignity. But yes, I kind of wanted to show you this book as a kind of a proof or evidence of what is changing. All right, so let me ask you, let me put these questions here now and I'd like you guys, I'd like to open it a little bit uh, to you guys, of course, we have already discussed a little bit the, what's the definition of success. Can you tell me a little bit more either about your relationship to success or failure? Okay. Have you ever reflected this? When did you realize what is your personal relationship with success or failure? Um, have you ever had been or been in this situation where you have achieved a lot, but you didn't, you feel, you felt completely unfulfilled? So that idea of, I want to get the Ferrari. And when you then finally get the Ferrari, it's like, oh, <laughs> is this it? <laughs> um, or tell us a little bit about what makes you feel, we, some of you have already mentioned this as well, what makes you feel perhaps more joyful or expansive? You, uh, some of you have already talked about, um, obviously helping others, um, uh, helping your clients, etc. So yes, let me hear from you a little bit again. I can go first. That's not a problem. So I was in a, I was a computer science engineer, MBA in information systems from US. 
and I was in information technology career for almost 15 years. And I realized after 13 years of service in that sector, I realized that the only way I was growing was managing more and more heads in the organization, more and more people. So when I quit my job, and it was a conscious decision to leave that thriving career to figure out something and do something where I had a direct impact in people's lives. I figured that being a corporate director of delivery of services is just burdening me with managing 300, 400 people. And that's not what I was enjoying. It was good to an extent, but I realized that just managing people and treating them like machines is not giving me that joy and fulfillment. I need to do something else. So I quit my career to start financial advisory and I figured that in India, the fee-only financial advisory did not exist. So I pioneered that practice model. It took me a good six, seven years. I felt like quitting my second career multiple times, multiple times, but I guess it finally worked out. It took me about seven, eight years. So that was also a test of my EQ. How much can I put in, in terms of my own internal resources to make it happen? And when I finally felt that I have made it, I realized the families that I have positively benefited and that multiplied the joy and fulfillment factor in me because I was helping them directly in terms of efficient management of money. Also, I was helping them internally, their relationship with money, externally managing their portfolio to help them reach their financial goals faster, which I felt was a lot more deeper work, lot more fulfilling work because there was a direct impact. And I understand a lot of people think differently. A lot of people want to become a director, then vice president and managing director of a large services organization. I felt that was not me. For me, it was more of a direct impact in clients' lives. And today, after having spent 13 years in my second career, I feel right. I'm in the right place doing the right thing, which my soul wanted me to do. And I feel like growing this rather than the IT career that I was going 15, 13 years ago. Thank you for sharing, Amit. So I can see what you're saying, you know, was again, like the case of you are successful in what you're doing, but there are some questions in there. There are some kind of internal aspirations, like calling you into a different direction. And I, I love this. Actually, Bruce Feiler also puts in his book a lot of data about we are no longer because i also think that generationally this is changing a lot and the gen c really want to feel a lot more engaged uh, with their purpose in the work that they do and they want to feel more authentically um, as you, you've also mentioned the aspect of being authentically you basically in, in in what you do actually okay anybody else would like to share And it's coming. I wanted to um, to share that my career actually started in a small town in Pennsylvania where I was a teacher. And um, I graduated college. And I always thought that teaching was going to be my career. I thought it would give me balance in life and, um, and have the rigor that I wanted. And I taught for five years, and um, in the very beginning, I felt this like euphoria that I was making a difference, and I really felt that connection with the students. But over time, I started to to feel like um, it was becoming boring, and some of the people around me were actually not as motivated to be, you know, to make their teaching um, as meaningful as possible. So I eventually decided to make a, a move out of the small town of Pennsylvania and come to the big city of New York. And um, my first job was um, a very different job. It was in an advertising firm. And three months into it, I was fired. And I we talk about having, um, uh, you know, a, a, a real failure. That felt like such a failure to me. And, um, you know, my parents thought, oh, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to come back home now, aren't you? 
And I said, no, you know, I, I felt that it was time for me to try something else. And I eventually kind of fall into human resources and um, spent um, time doing a number of different things in human resources that filled my joy of like work, which, um, you know, I started in the, the educational side with learning and development. And then I moved on to recruiting and Angie, like you, I spent a lot of time as HR in investment banking. And I, I, I was doing that human resources job um, for 37 years until I retired um, last year. And now I'm reimagining my success. And, and, and frankly, I, I was feeling some of the things I talked about earlier around fulfillment. I was not feeling fulfilled by the end of my career. There was, you know, that hustle and no time for yourself. And, um, and now I'm in a phase where I'm just like enjoying every minute and um, I'm exploring. I've done a lot of coaching before, but I'm exploring getting certified in the coaching field and um, embarking on a new adventure. Um, yes. And I'm also, you know, not sure that it's only going to be coaching. I might, I don't know, you know, learn how to raise bees or do something totally different. Uh, but I am enjoying the, the journey. And, um, and it did have some failure to it and um, along the way, but it, 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 it feels, I feel very, very fulfilled at this point in time and excited about what's next. Thank you for sharing that. You see, for me, what you just described, your own personal study, is the, in the, the failure is again the information. You see, like, it's like that wasn't the way for you, right? It, it, it was not the channel, the, the vehicle, let's say. So, so then when you get this information, then you're just course correcting somehow, right? Mm. But um, this is very pertinent and it's very interesting because there are people or there are cultures that don't allow failure, okay? Um, or of course, I mean, I have had so many clients in Kenya who specifically who have told me, oh, but my father or my uncle or my auntie or whatever, like my grandfather always wanted me uh, to be this right and it's like there's no other way there's no other you know there's no there's no other path and and it's about finding your own path and i also think um colleen and we're going to get uh, now a little bit more into that i i also think that in one life you can have different expressions as well right so you can have a t you can be a teacher that's one way to express your purpose you can be a HR person, that's another vehicle or another way to express it. And sometimes that can fulfill you for a while. Um, and then maybe you have either outgrown the job or you have learned what was there for you to learn there. And then now you're moving into a new direction as well. Okay. So I think we are always continuously looking to re-express ourselves. And I think that that's perfectly fine because we also grow and we become different uh, people, ho hopefully more conscious <laughs> people as we go, as we, as, as we grow old and yes. And then, and, and I think we harvest also in a different way, you know, like because we develop different things in our life, it gets to a point where we can express also ourselves in a different way. I definitely think you should definitely look at the coaching, Colleen. Um, and certify is is certainly a, a fantastic adventure. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the next uh, slide. Okay, so exploring purpose. We have a little bit of time. So I have here a, a nice. Hold on, let me. I can't read the whole. Okay, I have a nice um, quote here by Dr. Terry Orlick, who was Canadian, and he was uh, linked to sports psychology and performance. Okay. So he says, the heart of human excellence begins to beat when you discover a pursuit that absorbs you, frees you, challenges you, 
challenges you or gives you a sense of meaning, joy, or passion. So this goes a little bit for me into the, how does it feel when you then reimagine success and you're starting to feel more aligned with, with your purpose? I think this is more how it feels. It's something that really, like we always talk about that, something that gets you out of bed in the morning, right? <laughs> so I think that if something is not getting you out of bed right now, then maybe it's not, maybe you have outgrown it, as I was saying, right? But then now you have a new thing or you find a new thing or when you are aligned with who you are and, and, and you want to continue in this direction, you feel this, something that absorbs you, but in a positive way. Yeah, not, not freeze you at the same time. Challenge, I agree with everything that you feel this meaning, joy, or passion. Okay. And it's not something that absorbs you in the sense of you're waking up and you're like, oh my goodness, I need to send that report to my boss. I need to send that email. Blah, 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 blah. It's not a to do list, right? It's something that you want to continue to explore. You want to give more. Okay. So I think that th and this is how it feels when you have this purpose. So I want to invite you to think, um, this is actually purposefully extremely simplistic. <laughs> okay. This is, this is, um, I want you to kind of think about this interaction of these three element elements in a little bit of a different way. Okay. So a lot of times, um, which is also a little bit generalistic or simplistic to say, we have started with the half, right? So clients will come to me in coaching and they will say, I want to uh, get a promotion, okay? Which is perfectly fine. Every single goal in coaching is completely valid, of course, but we are starting with a half, right? Or I want to have the Ferrari or I want to have a house or I want to have, I don't know what, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now, what about if we started from a different perspective, right? What about if we started with actually who who do you want to be right or what do you want to do so i've put impact here as a as a half not do okay because impact is also a little bit of an outcome um situation and i feel for me the half is the outcome of the three basically okay the b mm, the b is more identity for me and Identity is in constant progression throughout our lives, okay? So identity is a conjunction of things, right? It's a, it's a bubble <laughs> and like a, a bubble of everything. There is the B of where you come from, okay? Your ancestors, your family, like uh, your, your uh, the legacy of the people who were here before us, our society, our family, our country, so there's a lot condensed in there, okay? But we're then constantly getting exposed and expanding it in our lives, okay? So remember for myself, talking about myself, I have lived in five countries and for me, it was very interesting to kind of get to see how are people in different ways, right? So um, these days I say that Spanish are the Africans of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> which I think so, right? So, so I'm living in the UK. So sometimes we, we get to focus only on, oh, the UK people are punctual or as a culture, they are punctual. But what I loved about coming to the UK is, for me is that is a very meritocratic culture, for instance. But what I love about uh, Spain and, uh, and Kenyans is the sense of community and the sense of expanded family. That's definitely something, that's who I am, that, that I grew up in this sense of expanded family and that's still what I want for my children. I want them to grow and feel loved in, in, in a bigger family, if that makes sense. So, so I think that identity is always evolving, okay? But I think that this is also the question at some point in time is the conscious question to ask yourself, who do I want to be, okay? Who do I want to be as a coach? Mm, so, yes, it's, 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 it's really completely up to you to define who you want to be. There's, there's the, the whatever is coming already, given, 
And for me, I take the best of that. <laughs> I, that's, that's the way I deal with it. Um, but then there's also the who do I want to be as a coach, as a mom. So you can go by roles, for instance, if you wanted that, that's, that's a good way to put it as well. All right. Now, I have mentioned this doing as an expression and Colleen will, both Colleen and Amit was giving, were giving us good examples. So sometimes you have started doing X in your life and that was the first vehicle. Okay. So being a teacher or being in IT. And then at some point in time, you have gone into, I think you have also been, so you see how everything is evolving, right? What you have, your strengths, your skills, etc., keep on evolving and improving. And actually, most interestingly, you keep on realizing what strengths you have, because at some point in time, you, these strengths were not really conscious. Interestingly, what we are really good at, we are not aware of a lot of the times because it's natural to us. And in fact, we tend to think that everybody's the same, but the more contrast, the, the more information we receive, the more people we were walk in our lives, we realize actually, oh wow, I am very different. <laughs> I have a whole set of gifts of strengths that are completely different to other people, right? And therefore we, can sometimes express it in a particular way, but then we continuously again express it in, in different ways, okay? So for me, it's been so interesting. I don't know if you have also had some of these. So I think it's also a little bit related to in your 20s, you're really like exploring everything, okay? In, 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 in your teenage years, you want to be part of a group, okay? No doubt about it. In the twenties, you're kind of exploring, you're going out to the workplace, you're kind of finding out, ah, oh, this is what I'm good at. Maybe I'm not so good at this. I don't know what, blah, blah, but I can continue to develop, etc. In your thirties, you're kind of really getting more senior. I think in your forties, you're almost having like a, or at least this is how it worked for me a little bit. You're almost having like a tunnel vision, like going back in a circle somehow to to, to the to 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 decades before, and you're and you're kind of reevaluating. Oh, hold on, am I really good at this? Other like what what matters to me also starts to become a much uh, forefront question. Basically, what really matters to you, like, and I think for women it's a big one in the forties. Definitely, I, I, of course, I'm not a man. I cannot, <laughs> but I think for women we start to really let go of a lot of societal expectations, family expectations, etc., And we just focus a lot more on what do we want to create basically. Okay. And the reason why I'm saying I was having this kind of tunnel vision is because it's so interesting. Like I think life is always sending us information. I was in Spain in Ista and my mom was remembering how when I was uh, in secondary school, I had been helping, but this is also uh, something that this guy told my mom. So he was telling my mom, oh, Angie really helped me when we were in secondary. She was telling me how to study more efficiently to get a better result. <laughs> and I was like, really? I don't remember that. <laughs> like. So a lot of times it's completely in our blind spot, the things, some of these things that are our gifts, <laughs> actually. So I've always been interested in performance, you know, at, at the core of it, I studied really performance coaching, <laughs> basically. Okay. Um, and, and if you do go back to your, uh, when you were a child, what did you really like, you know, like what were you enjoying? and? I think sometimes it's, it's difficult. Of course, for some people, it's, it's easy to know, oh, I used to love drawing or whatever, you know, like that's something that you're doing. But yes, like what, what way you bringing? Because what we're talking about is like, what do we bring to the world? Like the sum of all of these is what we are bringing to the world. Okay. What are we here to do basically? Okay. For me, purpose is not is is not necessarily. Mm. 
how how do I increase twenty five percent women in boards? That's not purpose, okay? That's really a goal. That's more on the doing, basically, or the having, like what type of impact. But it's more like how are you? And companies, by the way, can also think about this in this way. How are you advancing? Even if it sounds a bit um, corny, <laughs> how are you advancing humanity? Okay, what are you doing that is helping us as a human race advance or progress? Okay, okay. So I think that this is a very, very deep, <laughs> high-level question. So let me go into the next one. So some of the questions that I have worked with um, clients. So we've talked a little bit um, about if, if well, you can tell me. You can tell me now. I'm gonna open it again for you guys to talk a little bit about this. Have you explored your purpose? Like, have have you got into a place where you feel you can define? So of course, some people call purpose also personal mission. Again, like the language can be a little bit open. Do you feel, and again, Amit has already told us, he feels now a lot more aligned with his purpose, okay? Um, some other things that can help you think about this purpose. Why do you do what you do? Who are you? What are your values? What do you feel passionate about? What comes easy to you? What are your gifts? So in my case, I have concluded, I keep on changing the language, and I think it doesn't matter, it's fluid. It's more the sense of, I think for me, I have concluded that my purpose is I am here to help people, okay? I'm here to help people really um, develop their potential, okay? So for me, potential is something that I really associate with. I feel that we can always continue to grow. We can always continue to learn. Um, and for me, I really work with people who want to continue to develop and learn, etc. So what I don't like <laughs> is victim stories, um, stories of limitations, etc., etc., where we see the world in a way where is that I cannot, no? I cannot. Like, if you, if you believe that you cannot, then definitely you're not going to get there. That's for sure. Because what we believe, we do, right? Or, or we are, basically. So, and then for me, the expressions have been very clear. You know, as a, as a HR person, I definitely always help people. Um, I, in HR, I did a lot of recruitment, and I, but I was always a bit of a different recruiter, basically. I was always looking for what's the best fit. It wasn't only about just getting numbers uh, in. It was always about like, what is the best fit? Like, is this person good for this company, etc. So I feel I have always, when I look back, and I think, of course, if you are at this age with all your experiences, you can also look back and try to identify what is the thing that I've always been doing. The underlying idea of what I've always been doing is definitely helping people reach their potential. And again, because the potential is not a, a sole destination, the potential keeps on evolving, okay? But I have, I have really... Uh, help people with that. Okay, so what about you guys? Any thoughts, any ideas? And it's Colleen again. I, you know, when I, I left a okay. city after 37 years, um, and I was the uh, global head of human resources for banking, capital markets, and advisory. And um, when I left, I was surprised at uh, kind of the number of people that reached out um, to connect. And there was one woman that wasn't even part of my. Um, and this goes to kind of like the blind spots of what you have. Um, this one woman was in the risk area. She was not even affiliated with the investment bank, but I happened to uh, participate in a management program. And that's how I knew her. 
Yes. And um, she had um, been wanting to get together ever since I left. So I will, I tend to do like, you know, lunches with different people or whatever. And so I got together with her and um, she said, your positive spirit really impacted me. And I want, I, you, you, you nurture me when I'm with you. And I was like, oh my God, I cannot even believe that that was something that I was, was impacting her on. And it kind of goes to kind of looking at yourself. I think I've, I've, I've had a lot of, 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 of challenges in my life, but one of the strengths that I've had has been, I usually get up in the morning with a happy heart and a positive kind of approach to life. And, um, and, but I never realized that that had an impact on other people. So yeah, that one I can share as uh, I, I, re- I can relate to what you're saying. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Colleen. Let me go. Somebody else was just starting to talk. Yes, Ashutosh. Yeah, hi, Ashutosh. Yeah, hi. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, yeah, pretty useful discussion on exploring purpose and being authentic and uh, uh, it's uh, a lot of conversation is around uh, finding the true purpose in life. Um, but there are two thoughts that come to my mind. Um, uh, I'm not sort of trying to be contrarian, but a lot of, um, uh, you know, super stellar achievements um, in the history of mankind have been uh, done by people, uh, you know, across professions, scientists or uh, architects, engineers, lawyers, you know, change agents, uh, revolutionaries, uh, when they uh, just put their, you know, nose to the grindstone and just kept pegging away with great resilience in the face of setbacks and adversity, they just kept going. Um, When we talk to such people, uh, they really not, uh, they don't really mention that I was trying to find my purpose but I was trying to be very authentic. They just were that way. They were they were just sort of um, uh, going where they felt uh, life was leading them, and they tried to do their best in in uh, whatever field they were in. So um, I don't know if this whole uh, mindset of um, you know I want to find my purpose, and usually it is about people who have quit or you know escaped a particular drudgery or monotony or uh, routine kind of programmable decisions and gone into something which is more creative and non-programmable and gives them more satisfaction. Uh, so my first point is about um, that it may not be necessary to have a very well formulated and crystallized purpose early in life or you know even in your 20s, 30s, 40s. You may just be doing well in a job even though you may not love it with all your heart and soul. But you're creating something and you're sort of, uh, you're a valued contributor in your own way. My second point is uh, <clears throat> that um, uh, escaping from uh, what we perceive as drudgery at some stage, monotony and, you know, want to follow your passion has to do with a certain, reaching a certain economic independence, uh, <clears throat> has to do with a certain uh, life stage where you feel you can take the plunge and do what your heart desires uh, and so on and so forth. At least the people I've spoken to, they are now happier, but they're also empty nesters. They have a uh, <clears throat> debt-free life. They have their own sort of basics sorted out. But the, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that uh, it's a luxury, you know, following your passion is a luxury when you have already achieved the first two, three runs of Meslow's scale. So that was my two cents, really, my thoughts. So first, uh, my response, first of all, absolutely, you don't need to have um, consciously developed your definition of your purpose. Interestingly, subconsciously, your purpose is driving you anyway, quite frankly, okay? So uh, what I've realized in... I have worked with so many people from a career perspective. And remember, I have hired, interviewed thousands, <laughs> thousands of people in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And 
you don't need to have brought it to your consciousness. As we know, our life is being run. We're going to get a bit Freudian here, right? Or Jungian. Uh, our life is run by why would, what we believe um, internally, okay? And even when you have not explored that, even when you haven't brought it to your conscious, it's still driving your life, okay? So yes, that's why you will have people, so you'll have people like Elon Musk, who talks about his purpose, okay? But you'll have a lot of people, but this whole purpose is kind of quite more modern language, I feel, okay? You'll have people like, I don't think Leonardo da Vinci was talking about what is his purpose in life, definitely. Um, so that makes lots of sense. The second thing, it's a luxury. Is it? I don't know. Like, remember that I said when I've worked in investment banking, I have seen people. So um, I remember also an interesting conversation with um, Vincent Ogutu in Kenya, in uh, Strathmore University where he talks a little bit more about how people find their purpose, okay? And he talks about different things. So sometimes you may, uh, it may be like a slow burn, like, and I think Colleen and Namit, what they have said today is a bit more of a slow burn, basically. Um, he talks, uh, Mr. Rook talks about sometimes having like a boom, something happens in your life that like changes completely like redirects completely the who you are, what do you believe in, et cetera, et cetera. So, and sometimes that can also be, I have seen people in investment banking who were making lots of money, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, responding to societal beliefs of you need to have a job, to have a salary, to have a stability, to have safety, I don't know, blah, blah. Anything else is a luxury, okay? But I have seen people who were in investment banking and have developed cancer, autoimmune diseases, etc., to the point of not being, their body is not allowing them to work, okay? <laughs> and they have left the job and they have lived, okay? <laughs> so, yes, is it a luxury? Sometimes maybe not a luxury, even if you're making less money. I bet that actually a lot of us are making a lot less money <laughs> than we were making in our corporate careers. But is that level of fulfillment that we are talking about? Again, it's not something that we are expecting everybody to do. Again, as uh, coaches, is something, inquiry is a big part of our life. And this is what we are doing here. And by the way, being contrarian can also be a purpose in life. <laughs> I think right. Amit has uh, his light, his hand up. Amit. Can, can I share something? Mm, mm -hmm. okay. So, I mean, the points that Mr. Ashutosh raised are very pertinent and very relevant. Yesterday, I was in an event for a TV channel and I was a panelist. Immediately after my panel discussion, there was a spotlight speaker and she's a badminton player of India. She's a very famous player and for folks in India, I'm talking about Saina Nehwal. So Saina Nehwal was the chief guest, no, not the chief guest, the spotlight speaker. While the anchor was interviewing her, she was sharing that she was forced to pick up sports. She was forced by the circumstances to pick up badminton, which is a sport. And she was forced to join an academy. If she was not forced to do these things by parents or by circumstances, she would have never become an ace badminton player. So the point that Ashutosh was talking about is when you go through the rigor of life because of reasons which could be parents, which could be circumstances, that's also a very much a possibility. Not everybody has to identify a purposeful life. It could be a happy-go-lucky person. He's happy with his job. If he needs money more than job satisfaction, obviously he'll pursue money because he has responsibilities to fulfill it. He just can't be a passionate pursuer of his purpose without earning good money when he has dependence on him. What I have realized through my client experiences is that definitely what matters, whether you are choosing a script of being purposeful by pursuing your passion or you're choosing a script of going through the flow of life, whatever life throws at you, what matters ultimately as a financial coach I've realized is how much of a balance 
do you have of freedom, growth and joy? You need to be joyful with what you are doing. You need to have growth elements in what you are doing. And you need to have freedom to pick and choose and do what you want to do. Use money the way you want to use the money. So you need freedom, growth and joy in all aspects of life. Whether you are choosing purposeful framework to become purposeful or you are choosing some other framework where life is throwing you through the different rigors and helping you achieve what you want to achieve. That's my two cents, if it makes sense. That makes sense. I think what we're talking about as well is finding purpose in what we do. Okay, so so sometimes uh, purpose can take you in a different direction, which is perfectly fine. Sometimes it's just engaging with the purpose of what you're already doing. Okay, so I'll give you an example. And I think that this is something that companies definitely should be talking a lot about. So when I've worked at City, so remember, I was in my purpose because my purpose is help people anyway, right? So I am already in my purpose, even if I haven't defined it um, at that time, okay? In black and white, put it in a paper or whatever, okay? Now, again, as I said, sometimes some people maybe uh, maybe outgrow that job or not, which is perfectly fine, okay? For some people, job is just a conduct um, to get money and do other things in their life, okay? I know lots of people who think exactly like this. And again, nobody is saying that it's better or worse or, or anything like that, okay? Now, finding purpose in what you do, it's, it's still purposeful, absolutely, you know? And, and maybe actually you are a nourisher or you are a producer or you are, so, and that's perfectly fine. You can be a teacher and be motivated to do that because you're here to help uh, again internally you don't know but you're here to help um, people discover things okay so that could be a teacher that could be a um, filmmaker by the way so the expressions can be so different so it could be that your life is about discovery and you were helping children in school but then one day you decide yeah I want to get into cinema and help people discover things in a different way. So the, the theme of discovery is still there. So for people who are happy doing what they're doing, it's perfectly fine. By the way, I also believe that we are all the time being guided. Okay? So um, we are all the time being guided. So yeah, sometimes maybe you wouldn't have gotten into badminton if, if somebody in your family didn't give you the idea, of course. And, 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 but you picked up the badminton and you carried on with the badminton. That's the bit that matters. It's not so much the information that you were shown. It's what you did with that information. It's what's different in my, in my view. Okay. So, yes. So, of course, like society could have shown me, okay, um, Angie, uh, your culture believes that uh, women definitely should be mothers. But is the decision of, okay, I've been shown and I have stories, lots of stories of women who are telling me, oh my God, being a mother is the best thing in the world. But is it still, it's still nice to be able to think, do I want to be a mother? What type of mother do I want to be? That's the difference, right? Like I want to be at some point in time, I'm choosing, I want to be a present mother. And what does that then mean to me and in my life, okay? So when I establish, I want to be a present mother, and that means to me, so being every night. So these are the things that I'm inviting you guys to think about. What it matters to you and what is the implication of what matters to you in your life, okay? So I'm giving you this example. So for me, at some point in time, being a present mother mattered for different reasons. Again, each one of us will have different explanations, but for me, my children are my legacy, okay? So why to leave my children to grow with nannies and whatnot when I, I, I want to be there? I want to be in their life. I want them to be in my life. They have come to my life. <laughs> um, and yeah, being present for me, one measurement of success for me being a present mother is to read with my children every night before they go to sleep, which means that will I do it every single day? No, sometimes I will still choose to either have me time or, or time with my partner or time with my friends. But it means that when I can, I will choose 
to have that reading with my children in the night, basically. Okay, so so that's kind of how it works a little bit. Okay, um, sorry, I was going to tell you the example of City when I used to work at City and engaging with purpose and engaging with the purpose of the company. So we celebrated the 200th anniversary of City. Some of you may remember if you are ex City. And I personally really liked about uh, how City at this point was talking about how the work of City has enabled an advancement in humanity. So for instance, City contributed to um, funding um, the space exploration and, and, and getting to the moon, for instance. No? So, so these are some of the things that we can use also to kind of engage with purpose. Like if companies are talking about their purpose and, and how what they do enables um, some of these progress and, 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 and some of these things, okay? So of course we can absolutely engage with that. Doesn't mean that you have to radically leave everything <laughs> that you're doing and just do something completely different. Um, yeah, I know I know people who can be a nurse for life. Um, I also think that what we celebrate as society, and we saw this during the pandemic, is incredibly important. If we only celebrate uh, people who are in the Forbes 100 list, this is the richest person and they have this yacht and I don't know what, blah, blah, blah. But we don't celebrate the nurse that comes in and out every single day. You know, those are measurements of success as well, right? So a lot needs to be, it's a constant um, conversation. A lot more needs to be uh, discovered, explored, discussed. You know, why cannot we celebrate also the invisible people, the people who are producers in a completely different way, um, who are nourishing our children every day, who are nourishing our ill people every day, etc., etc. Okay. Okay. I'm conscious of time. I want to close it. Uh, so I'm going to show you. So there's a lot of literature and a lot of literature on the purpose is actually related to the how to find your purpose <laughs> which is as we are saying more relevant or not depending on what you want to do i love the contrarian thinking as well by the way for me mm, like these are four books that i have read that interestingly do touch on aspects of purpose uh, first of all is ikigai i'm sure you have heard about it and like how the different kind of bubbles um, are kind of helping you bring up this ikigai, this meaning in your life, etc. I have mentioned uh, Bruce Feiler. I loved Life in, is in the Transitions personally because it's a lot about making meaning out of the things that are happening in your life. Okay. Um, so again, we, it goes back to the concept of I may not know what's my purpose or whatever, doesn't matter but I'm making meaning of what's happening in my life. Now, Atomic Habits, interestingly, is not one that people would actually necessarily <laughs> understand as related to purpose, but I put it here because Atomic Habits, for me, people always talk about process. We are in a society that personally, I feel, is a little bit obsessed with equations and uh, mathematic equations of if you do X and B or add X and B, you will have C. Um, and I think people always talk about atomic habits as the process and the systems and all of that to create results. But the thing that is very central in James's clear um, um, theory is all about identity, is how do you see yourself, okay? Do you see yourself as X and then that will allow you to get there? or do you see yourself as completely different? And of course, I've, I've gone kind of from more personal to something that can be a little bit more used to for corporate and work. The Start With The Why is amazing. Still um, one of the best books that I have read, definitely around how uh, purpose and the why can really help uh, companies, people, etc. Okay, all right. And I'm gonna leave you with the final quote that I personally love from Pablo Picasso. Uh, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. 
I'll let, I'll let you think about this one. <laughs> um, Ridima, I'll take it back to you. Thank you so much for today, for giving me the opportunity. Please get in touch if you want.